Okay, well, that's the vibe for today's video. <laughs> this video is all about the secret life of living alone. You guys asked me so many, whoa, I'm getting deja vu. I think that's a good sign. For me to answer in today's video, I thought it'd be fun for me to just answer them while I'm prepping dinner. It is gonna be a storm, so you're gonna be hearing some thunderstorm here and there. I'll just turn off the sound so we can all just have like a moody little, little day. What is your favorite activity to do alone that is outside your apartment? The hidden gem of living alone and navigating doing life alone is honestly in the mundane tasks of life. What I mean by that is chores, running errands, these things like keep me sane. Oh my God, I feel like that's gonna be really loud. Um, <laughs> activities outside of the house that I can do by myself that I know I have to do really, really helps. Some of these will be like going to a thrift store, getting a book, going to like a coffee shop. These things I can do alone because one, I'm not uncomfortable doing them alone. And two, I don't really need anyone to join me on these little tasks. So for you, if you're tr having trouble finding things to do outside of your apartment alone, start with errands. They will be a lifesaver. You don't have errands? Find some. <laughs> make some up. Oh, you have to go to the post office for to get a stamp? You don't even mail it. Ooh. No, oh, this can be <laughs> this video. <laughs> now that you have lived alone for so long and for those of you that are new, 4 years living alone, no man, no pet. It's truly, yeah, a journey. <laughs> um, uh, do you ever wonder how it will be if or when you do eventually move in with somebody else? This is a great question. So great that a guy asked me this just a few days ago <laughs> and that was truly a journey in itself. Um, I think it'll be a transition. Um, I, don't, I really don't know. It's, it's kind of not exciting to think about because it really depends on who I'm with. And um, I know that I'll pick someone who is very respectful of you know, what I'm creating online and will allow me to express myself as I have been, so who really knows? Has your rent been increasing each term? Yes, every year. Actually, well, the first year um, I was paying like 1350 and they gave me a prorated discount. So what that means is basically whenever you are moving into an apartment, Apartments sometimes will get will they'll do a deal where it's like two weeks free one month free They'll give you two options. They'll say okay Well, you can have one month free and the rest of the months out of the year It's gonna be the usual rate or you can take that one month free and split it up into 12 months So that your monthly rent is less every month like the same rate, but decrease take that second option That's what I did um, the second year my rate was like 14 something um and then the third year covid hit so they kept the rate the same and then this year they just increased it uh, a little bit thankfully and so yep traditionally uh, every year for an apartment they increase your rate and I, the city that i live in is growing so big i think it was one of the top cities with the highest housing increase of all time or i don't really know but it's so bad here in this city <laughs> absolutely brutal what do people never ask you that you wish they did um are you feeling okay today listen when you live alone your mind is very available available to go across every scenario in the world okay tonight for dinner just a quick transition really fast um, I'm going to be making a roasted vegetable medley with some salmon, sushi rice, and yep, yeah, that should be it. So that's what I'm prepping really fast. How do you find the motivation to cook and go to the gym after a long day of work? I am new to both, but I would like to do more in terms of physical health and cooking. So basically, um, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I, well, okay, cooking wise, oh, so easy. What I do is I find two recipes to cook during the week. 
In this case, for this week, I know I have a lot of frozen salmon and I just bought some vegetables that are gonna be good to roast in the oven. Done. And sushi rice, like done for the week. I don't have to think. I can just have the same thing every other day kind of situation. Um, working out, honestly, I don't, I don't really work out right now. Uh, I, it's, I do home workouts and I do it in the morning because I know I have the most energy. I have a lot of friends that work out after work. Um, it's not easy for them, but they do it and they love it. So if you're a morning workout person or an after work workout person, find out those days every other day and push yourself and stick to it. But for me, I love to work out in the mornings and I like to do it at home because I can't afford a gym membership. That's just the reality of where I'm at right now. <laughs> but the balance is definitely not easy, I'll tell you that. But you, you have to get into your own rhythm. It'll happen for you. It's, it just, it's a matter of what is your routine and where does it kind of fall into it? Because I can tell you my routine, but it's gonna look completely different for you. You know what I mean? How to deal with this weird sensation of not having anyone to talk to and share life with. Well, the not having anyone to talk to, it, um, if that is daunting for you, make those phone calls, send those text messages to people that you know, co-work. I mean, listen, I'm grateful that I have a lot of friends, but um, the way that I have these friends is because I make an effort to reach out to them, to communicate with them daily, this helps me feel like I have someone to talk to. Dating apps really helps for you guys. There's Bumble BFF, make a friend on there. Fill that void of needing to talk to someone. And on the part of sharing life with someone, yeah, I think it's hard. It is so hard, especially when you're kind of ready to like share your, your life with someone else and you have a lot of love to give. Like that's my case. Like I feel like I have so much love to give but I trust my timing. Um, I trust the experiences and the growth that I may still need to do. So yeah, it's hard sometimes when it feels like I don't have anyone to talk to, but if I'm being honest, I don't really have those emotions often. I really enjoy being alone. I really enjoy the silence, the, you know, like my little routines. There are some grueling days where I wish desperately that I could share this all with or like you know talk to someone that i'm interested in but it never holds me back i'm never like miserable i'm sad about it for a little bit it feels weird but i'm never like absolutely miserable so it is a challenge how do you deal with being alone at night have you had any bad experiences um the night times i think are really comfortable for me Maybe once every three months, I'll have a little spooky moment where um, anytime I used to get really like, uh, I would sometimes think I hear someone knocking on the door and I would look out my peephole and I'd be like, is there someone there? Am I imagining it? Luckily, um, I just have to talk out loud and be like, you're fine. Whatever happens, happens. Like it's not really much you can do about the scenario. So. I just try to stay as protected as I can. I have a whole video on like what to do, how to feel safe living alone, but yeah, I thankfully haven't had any like really scary experiences. I'm pretty level-headed. I'm not gonna ever psych myself out. How do you deal with the social pressure of not having a partner, a child, and everyone around you has it all? Yeah. <laughs> Is it the story of everyone's lives? Yes. We all want what we can have. We all want what everyone else has and I never am envious of my friends in a really nice way like yeah of course I want to get married if I were in their shoes and I could get married to their partners would I No. what I mean by that is not only is there a person for everyone everyone's journey is different I of course it sounds nice to be married it sounds nice to have a kid but I'm not really ready for that. And whenever you have these intrusive thoughts where you're like, I want what my friend has, or I want, I want a kid, or I want a wedding, or I want a relationship, I want you to think about, are you ready for that? Are you able to be a good partner? Can you be a selfless partner? Can you have the tough conversations and disagreements and grow from them? Are you 
a non-jealous person? Can you trust your partner? Are you there yet? These are questions that I always ask myself whenever I'm so desperate for a relationship. I'm like, well, Nagin, let's say you are in a relationship and let's say you're handed this scenario with your partner. How would you handle it? And that lets me know cognitively, I'm still immature. I still need some work to do on myself. I need to get another stream of income. So I'm occupied. Like these are things that I used to think about anytime it came to me comparing myself to others because it would remind me that I'm on my own journey and I still have some work to do. So my friend, think about that. And also anytime, anytime you want the life of others, say this in your head, some of that for me, please because it's coming less from an envious, yucky feeling place and more of, I'm really happy for the people around me that are happy and getting the best in life. And I know that one day I'm gonna have that too. Some of that for me, please. And I promise you changing your mindset, changing your attitude towards people that want, changing your attitude towards things that you want instead of, mm, I want that. Why can't I have that too? I'm so happy for them because they deserve it. And I know whenever it's my time, I'm going to love every moment of it. But yeah, for sure. I want all of that. <laughs> you just kind of have to hit an enlightened part of your life where it's coming from a place of love of wanting and not a place of envy and wanting. I'm putting my cauliflowers on a pan. That was a good question. And thank you for asking it because it's not easy to be vulnerable and admit that you want the life that other people have. Um, I, I get jealous so, I, I used to get jealous so easily. There are so many things that I want that I wish I had, but having that feeling of anger in my heart, of jealousy in my heart, oh my God, it is very consuming. I am good. I do not want to think about it. I just express happiness for my friends and people that I know. And I just know that one day it'll come for me. And when it comes for me, it'll be freaking amazing. So that's it. veggies are prepped. I set my oven to 425. I seasoned them with some salt, pepper, basil, you name it. It's on there. Actually, I kept it simple because I'm going to have like soy sauce, you know, with the salmon. So I don't want there to be too many spices. The next question is one really good trait you think you have or have improved while living alone. Oh my God. Great question. That is my self soothing ritual. I made a video about exactly what I do when I'm at an absolute low in my life. When life is hitting me hard, I'm depressed and I'm miserable. Maybe my heart is broken. Maybe I'm just at the lowest point of my life. No one understands what I'm going through. I don't want to talk to anyone about it. Being able to have a self-soothing ritual for myself to get myself back up again to feeling better. Wow. I'm freaking proud of myself. I couldn't have done it without my therapist, Edward, but after our sessions ended, I was able to come up with a few ways where when the clouds are filling up my life, I found a few ways to kind of just like disperse them and feel a little bit in better spirit. So for the sake of the video, what are some of those things that I have learned? I learned how to be comfortable in silence. 
I learned how to love myself, to be in my own presence and not hate myself. Actually, when I first moved into my apartment and I was assembling my bed and I was ordering everything for my apartment with my own money, assembling things, not even asking any guys or anyone for help, it was incredible. I was sitting there like, I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone. I can do all of this by myself and I did. And look at where I'm at now. I'm able to do all of this without asking anyone for help. That was the biggest lesson I learned. Which video do you like that you have made? I think I would have to say the funniest one that I watch uh, that I actually LOL at is the I called the police three times vlog or the video because it was just so funny because the police called me and I love how I just I don't know I think that was like really really funny for me um the one that I found was that I think is my favorite vlog would be the vlog mental reset with the thumbnail that says I need to leave solely because my parents made their first appearance in there and I think that was just like the cutest cutest day ever I loved it and then I think the one that I know helped my audience the most was probably understanding loneliness and six ways to be happy alone. I, I know those were two of the transformative videos on my channel that I recently posted and I think people really are getting a lot from those. So to be honest, I love all of them. I, I know and I do and I, I'm sorry if that's egotistical or whatever, but like I put so much effort in the videos that I put out and the topics that I talk about and the edits that I do. So. I love them all <laughs> and I never really upload a video that I'm not crazy about so yeah good question so I'm gonna wait for the veggies to cook then I'm gonna add in the salmon then I'm gonna heat up the sushi rice and then we'll sit down and we'll finish up the questions hello look at dinner um, basically it is sushi rice with a baked salmon salt pepper basil and then the vegetable medley which is just roasted whatever veggies i had which is green beans cauliflower and carrots so let's take a bite and i drizzled the last bit of my soy sauce on it and a little bit of qp mayo my stomach hates mayo so i'm here to suffer I'm gonna go put some balsamic vinegar on this. Okay, let's see if it tastes better. I don't know, I just needed some acidity. You know what I mean? Mmm. That is very good. Mmm. How often do you go out with your friends? So I basically, because I work from home and I like to say I see them like four times out of the week, three or four times out of the week. And then I feel like that really, really helps me not only get out of the house, but have some type of like interaction because the job that I have, I don't really talk to anyone. I just kind of do my work and like that's it because I've just automated it for so many years. So. This question is, how did you feel when you got the keys to your own apartment? Um, it was hard because I was going through a breakup and I had just had to leave my old apartment that I really loved and now I was in this foreign apartment that I, nothing was in here. I think I was really, really happy. I, I, I forgot what my feeling was. I don't know, I, I think it was just kind of like, this is it. This is your new journey kind of feeling. It was scary for sure, very scary. I had no idea what the future would hold, so. And the last question is, what is your after work routine? Um, I'm actually gonna be doing a whole fall series on my channel and I'm gonna do my like, I, I think I have a video on my nighttime routine, but this, literally if I wasn't filming right now, I would have prepared dinner the same as I did with you guys. I would have taken a shower and then turned on Seinfeld and watched for like two and a half hours. 
have an incense going and just really create a very calm, cozy atmosphere. And sometimes I'll journal and reflect on my day and my heart and what's on, what's permeating through my thoughts, or maybe I'll read a little bit of a book. So I don't know, I just try to keep it quiet, try to keep it simple, try to keep good vibes. I don't want to watch anything disturbing or weird. I don't like to have drama filled conversations after the hours of 7 p.m. I just really like to keep it zen because I realize that if my brain is going off like crazy, I can't sleep. I'll be thinking about a billion things and then my dreams will be effed up. So like I can't have that happen. So I have to have like a very good positive nighttime routine. Anything that's in this head, I have to either get out on paper, talk in the shower, cry it out, whatever. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure that you are subscribed and you give it a thumbs up for more Q&As like this and just like chill chit chats and make sure you're following me on Instagram at Nagin Dargahi and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.